In this video, I'll show you how to create a bubble sort program in Scratch. So we start Scratch, click Create, and the first thing we're going to do is delete the sprite. So I right click on it, click Delete. We don't need it. Now we're going to start off with our program. The program will just be associated with a stage instead of with a sprite. Click Events when flag is checked. Next thing I have to do is create a couple of variables. First one is called I. Second one is called temp. And then I have to create a list to hold a set of random numbers. So I create a list and I'll just call it list. Now I get a whole bunch of new blocks to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is set I to 1. Click I and type 1. Then I'm going to set temp to 0. In programming, it's a good idea to initialize your variables. That way you always know what they are. We're going to initialize the list by deleting everything in the list. We do that by clicking All. So this creates an empty list and a couple of variables. Now I'm going to fill in the list with a set of random numbers. And I'll do that with a loop. We'll loop, and we'll loop for 10 random numbers. I need to add an item to the list. So I can do that with the Add thing to list item. And what I'm going to add is a random number between 1 and 100. That's in operators. Pick random, 1, 2, change this to 100. Okay, let's test this and see what happens. Click that, and sure enough we have numbers from 1 to 100, and they are certainly not sorted because they are random. Now I'm going to do the bubble sort algorithm. First thing I have to do is insert a repeat item. And instead of repeating 10 times, I'm going to repeat for the length of the list. The reason I do that is if I change the list size here, I don't have to change it anywhere else. Inside this first loop, I'm going to have a second loop. And this is going to be a repeat until. The until statement is i equals the length of the list. So it has an equal sign in it. Go to operators, find the equal sign, and put that in there. The statement is i equals length of the list. The reason that we didn't do this one 10 times, or the length of the list, is because we're not doing anything with each time through this list. Sometimes we skip over if two numbers are in the right order. If they are not, however, I need to do an if statement. And the if is if item i of the list is greater than item i plus 1 of the list. So I go to my operators and I look for the greater than operator. And now I go back to here, pick item and put it in here, pick item and put it in here. This item is going to be item i. It's the item that I'm looking at. This item is going to be item i plus 1. So since I have a plus, I have to go in here, put this into here, make it i, oops, sorry about that, i plus 1. So I'm checking if item i of the list is greater than item i plus 1, 
I need to switch them around. And the way you do that is to set temp to item I plus one of the list. I can copy this by pointing at the brown part here, right clicking and clicking duplicate, and then drop that in there. So now I've moved this item into temp, and now I'm going to switch the items around. I'll do that with a replace statement. I'm going to replace item I plus one of the list, which is this thing, right click, duplicate, drag it down here, and I'm going to replace it with item I of the list. Right click, duplicate, put it right in here. Oops, so I've got two of lists here. What I'm going to have to do is drag this out of here. And I'm just going to put item I plus one in here. Duplicate that. Now I have the right thing. Replace item I plus one with item I of the list. Now I'm going to switch temp into item I. So I'm going to do another replace. Replace temp. So I'm going to grab temp. Let's do the replace of I, item I first. Place item I with temp. OK, it's a little bit complicated. But what we're really just doing is going one, stepping one through the list. And at each step, we look at the item in the list. If it's bigger than the next item in the list, we switch them around. So that's what this whole loop does. Now I need to change I by 1. And I need to set I equal to 1 at the end of that first loop. OK, so here is my program. Let's try it out. So you can see it's looping through the list. And at the very end, everything is properly sorted. So that is our program.